welcome to lighting bots and here is the beginning of uh, our urp lighting episodes and tutorial in which we're going to try and teach you everything that you need to know to get up and running with urp and hopefully you learn a few things you did not know of at the same time we are hoping that you can solve some of the problems that we know are common among you unity users so i am using the asset of adam which is not available in unity asset store it's been deprecated so unless you already own it or bought it you will not have access to it so if you want to follow along and practice you can however go to unity asset store and you can probably just download space robot kyle which i i guess was the first version of adam and now that i look at it so you can download that and you can follow along and practice with adam's uh, protege or was it uh what is it called i mean robert kyle was first or clearly i can see that so the first thing we want to go through is the digression light one more thing before we start is you probably don't have the lighting tab i do mention it later on but you click on windows rendering and lighting that's where you get the lighting tab up and you can bake now for your case you can have it for example on shadow mask bake in drag for the timing it doesn't matter really uh, too much but what i wanted to uh, remind you is just to have the filtering on at least on auto uh, if you don't do that you'll probably be noticing this you'll see all the noises you can see that and uh, we need to put on the filtering to kind of uh, get rid of the noise which is often the case when you do your uh, lighting anyway it's about tweaking the filtering if you have too much noise uh, in my case i have progressive gpu uh, you want to use either progressive cpu or gpu this is not a lighting tutorial uh, you can go to my private channel for that okay so i just wanted to remind you that this is the setting uh, you want to keep it on filtering and auto and whatever light mapper and whatever lighting mode you want to try out uh, during this session thank you and uh, let's go over to the directional light before we go into unity i am also trying to explain the concept of lighting just a little bit in this free course so here we have an image of a directional light and when i refer to directional as parallel lighting in the video from the in the future i'm talking about the fact that every light has an equal distance so to speak and the reason the light has this uh, distance is because the origin of the sun is so far away that by the time it reaches earth they are parallel they are equal that's the only reason it's not really the only reason but in this example we're gonna say that's the only reason to make this free course as simple as possible so if you look at the shadows they all have the same directional shadows they kind of even and you can see it by the god ray as well uh, this is why the further the away you put the spotlight as well the closer the shadows become you won't necessarily mimic the sunlight uh, to that degree that easily but at least you know why here's another example of the sunlight one important characteristic with any lighting is the fact that you have a lot of bounce light now sunlight is a very strong light so you will end up with the light coming through and it will be bouncing around a lot which is why we say the word indirect light and bounce light in this free course another characteristic with the sunlight is obviously the time of day depending on the time of day and the angle of the light you should be changing the color of your light especially the sunlight because if you have long shadows as you see here it suggests sunset or sunrise therefore you want to add a bit of orange or yellow to your uh, mood and lighting I believe that's the last image i want to go through the thing with the sunlight is even though it's going through the glass or through the then to the wall it 
is pretty bright. Uh, you can see in this room there is no other light source on, more or less. But look how bright the room is. That is very important to understand when you add your light, uh, such as directional light. There's two factors here. There's the skylight and there's the directional light. In this episode, we're not necessarily going to skylight a lot, but we will cover it later in the videos in the future. Here I want you to observe the crispiness of the shadow, even though it's coming through the window, the glass. You can see it's pretty hard light. But the further away it goes, the further it travels, you can see it starts to blur out and it fades. So, hopefully that's a good basic understanding before we go into the engine. Because we really do need to understand how light works, even as simple as possible as this. So, for example... This is a 3D version, right? So in this case, you have light coming in and it is uh, bouncing around. I do have to apologize. I don't remember who owns all these images, but it's for educational use. So I hope that's okay. Um, you can see the lights coming in and you can see it's bouncing around. And this is just the directional light. And this is the kind of lighting I'm hoping you'll pick up and learn uh, and focus on uh, through these uh, videos. You can see the shadows, they are not very clear and sharp like here. They are very diffuse, but there is still shadow coming around here, or occlusion as well for that matter. Okay, so let's dive into Unity. Okay, so let's add directional light. But before we add directional light, let's just clear up a few things. You probably don't see the lighting tab already, so just make sure you click Window, Rendering, and Lighting. This will give you the lighting tab. So again, you click Window, Rendering, Lighting, and you can drag it right there. We will be needing it later, but make sure you have Inspector up and running instead, because that is what we will be looking at. So let's add the directional light. I go into the plus sign, I click light, and I add a directional light. Now the thing with the directional light is that its position does not matter, but only which direction it's pointing matters. So you can see it's outside of the box. So normally, if it was a proper box, first of all, it will block the light. So if I aim up, you'll see that it's aiming light on top of this area on the cube. If I aim down, you'll see that you're getting light inside on the characters. If I aim left, you see that it's coming from the left. If I aim right, you can see it's coming from the light, right. But there's no shadows. So if I go to the shadow type, I can then, for example, pick soft shadow. And you will see that you're getting the soft shadow. So maybe I want to make sure we can see some shadow and uh, just add it something like this. Now when I add it like this, you'll notice a couple of things, I believe, yes. So we will go through this again and again in the shadow chapter. But let's just go through it already now so you know something useful from the beginning. So with the directional light, you can change the color as such. I recommend following certain color palettes that make sense and you can then create swatches. You can create swatches by adding it into this swatch here and you can create a new library. You can call it sunset and you can click create and then for example let's say you are using this color in your project you can always click this and it will quickly add it and you can then switch between the color swatches depending on the project and the style. So that's a handy tip already, I would say. We're using real time for the sake of example. They are mixed and baked. We will go through it in the near future. Intensity is obviously the intensity of the light. Indirect multiplier is for baked or mixed lighting, which is basically the amount of indirect light or bounce light that's jumping around so you can uh, fill in the darkness a little bit. This is the key thing a lot of you 
do not use so when you're coming to me and you're saying it's too dark it's probably because you didn't use indirect multiplier when you're doing baking but we will talk about other solutions if you're not doing baking as well in the near future hard shadow instead of soft shadow has a more crisper and uh, hard shadow i guess and softer you can see has a, a blur effect on it it's not really blurring per se i guess but it's you get the point a lot of the time when you guys say okay it's very dark shadows i want to make them less dark a lot of you will reduce the strength like so and you will be like yeah that works it's daylight so you wouldn't have totally dark shadows there would be skylight and so on well i never recommend using this method this is a for me this is an incorrect method and i always keep it at one unless very rare scenarios and most of you just need to learn more about indirect multiplier and post processing and other techniques so you don't actually need to use the strength the resolution is the detail resolution for the shadow so you can see if i do low it becomes low if i do very high it becomes very high if i go back to use quality settings it stays the same why well that's because it's using the quality settings which is in project setting under quality you see shadows you can see its default is very high resolution but if i do low you'll see it's low so at least you know where that is so that is for directional light you can uh, understand it has a parallelized shadow parallel shadows which means they are all evenly distance and they all go towards the same direction let us just quickly make sure we have a very simple basic understanding of how a point light or a bulb or an omni light works in the real life it has one origin it goes the light it lies on every direction 360 degrees it follows the inverse square law as you can see here it falls down into darkness pretty quickly that is the purpose of inverse square law we will talk more about it in the future now a lot of people when they do digital lighting such as unity or unreal they'll uh, add a point light in areas like here because they know in real life that it tends to be a point light right it's an omni light more or less now in our context in unity because point light is very expensive we obviously put the spotlight and you will get the same effect using the spotlight actually and you can see that the light is very intense near it there's a what we call an ies profile type of look here um, and then there is the shadows from the actual light shade and it kind of falls down into shadow pretty quickly the contrast is fairly obvious here depending on the size of the light you have to try and mimic that as well so if it's a very small light source don't make it super strong super far away the smaller the light source the more likely it's going to go quickly into the darkness as you can see this is a pretty bright light source but because it's very small you can see it goes quickly into the darkness it doesn't travel too far so you want to mimic these things inside your uh, software in this case we are uh, practicing unity so that's something to remember on so let's go back into unity and, and explore these simple terms a bit The next light we're going to go through is point light. So for the point light, it's an omnidirectional light. Uh, so it's casting light in all direction. It is also one of the more expensive lights. It's essentially six spotlights pointing at a different direction. Uh, well, four spotlights. Six, one, two, three, five. Yes, six. <laughs> So the next light we're going to go through is the point light. Let's add the point light into the scene. 
control shift F just to move it quickly into the scene and you will see that the position of the light matters drastically in this case. Let's turn on the shadow quickly and you will see that an omnidirectional light casts shadows from its origin which means it's casting not even light but it's casting it in different directions. So you get some interesting spread and shadow like this. Like the other light, directional light, you can increase it and you can also have something called range. So what the range does, it gives you more control on where you want the light to start and end. This comes under this law of inverse square law. Basically what inverse square law is, it says to the light that by the time you reaches the end of the radius, I want you to stop casting full intensity. So as the light is traveling, there's less intensity, it drops down. In this case, it also stops the light from going through this radius. In red multiply it still doesn't work because we're not baking the light in this example. And that is a quick introduction to the point light. The next light is the most versatile light which is spotlight. There's not much to say when it comes to the spotlight. We kind of cover the basics. But the thing with spotlight often is you can see that they have a very specific, distinct look to them from the origin of the light. You can see there's a arc here and then you can see the, the lights again spreading with most intensity further down. Now the thing with spotlight, they cast a very specific shape and form depending on the angle of displacement of the light compared to the point light, right? So that is something you want to keep in mind is where the spotlight pointing and then you have the diffuse indirect light bouncing off that. And you can see that's happening here on the wall. It's pointing to the wall and then it's bouncing the light around uh, instead of pointing directly. Because the thing with Spotlight is they can often have very harsh lighting uh, unless you have a lot of them and they're diffused and they have a very specific shape that is very obvious like this. Uh, so very often people will use a point light or other things instead, but you don't have to. There are techniques we will learn as we go to deal with this. You can see a point light here as well, casting down and highlighting certain areas. This is much cheaper than using a point light. As I said previously, point light will cast light in all direction uh, instead of a very specific direction that you have control over. So you could replicate this by actually having two spotlight with a larger cone. Okay, so let's go through the basic inside Unity now. The next slide we're going to go through is uh, the spotlight. So let's just quickly add that. Plus sign, light and spotlight. Now the spotlight is the most versatile uh, light. You have the range which also follows the inverse square law meaning the further away the distance is the longer it takes before the light stops um, reaching this, this, the point the origin which is down here. So if I make it shorter you can see the light ends quicker and you have the spot angle which is for um, the penumbra which is basically the radius and you can then have a covered light a bit more in different areas let's just turn on the shadow very quickly there's one thing I want to show specifically that should work in this example uh, and that is, you can see that it's not connecting. And that's because it's um, hovering a little bit in the air. But other than that, this one is on the floor, right? But it's not connecting. This is often because of the bias in the shadow setting. So to deal with that, you can slide the bias down to about 0 0.01 or 2 normally. If you go on 0, when it's on soft shadows, you get an artifact. If you go on hard shadow, is less visible so that means 
if you need to have it on zero for whatever reason and there's no way you can uh, have it any higher you can then go from soft shadow to hard shadow and you'll get rid of the uh, strongest artifacts or if you want soft shadow you at least want to make sure it's 0 0.01 you can see the character is no longer bleeding light through him in this case his name is adam right and you also have near plane near plane is basically the where it cuts the shadow from the camera's um, distance normal bias is not something i can show here but normally what it does basically is gaps like these it will kind of crunch it together so you don't have them and i don't think it's going to do that here because of the type of model but that's what it does normally you can maybe i'm just curious no okay Area light. Air, the, how I would like to explain area light, for the sim sake of simplicity, 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 is I want you to think about area light as you would think about skylight or diffuse light in this case. Area light, its purpose is to work as a soft box if you're into photography, right? Uh, it's uh, a lot of lights being cast, and it's so many of it. And it's spreading around so evenly that it's very hard to spot the shadows for example in this image it's very hard to see any harsh shadows on this statue uh, which is the concept of diffuse light you can see it's very well lit you can still see that there is some shadow right this is the bright side on the right side and then there is still the shadow side on the left but it's so harsh uh, in the background which is like the sunlight but this is not in the sunlight necessarily, so it's receiving what we call diffuse light. You can see the same here. It's out in the open. You can see there's some shadow coming on around there. But you can see it's evenly lit. You can see the reflection and a shape and form. Uh, here, <laughs> you can see that you have the light on top of the ball, and it kind of slowly goes into gradient, and it's the same all over this statue as well again i do apologize i don't remember who has uh, who who actually owns these images but again these are for educational purposes so i apologize and uh, here you can see that diffuse light is all about lighting up something without necessarily giving them very harsh shadows right and i will explain to you in Unity's specific case, the fact that it doesn't necessarily cast shadow, but also that it has different challenges. So you would normally use it for windows or something very specific, for example, studio lighting and so on. But again, there are other ways of doing the same thing differently using emissive lighting, for example, which we'll also go through in the future. So let's jump into Unity. The next thing we want to go through is the area light. Now, I personally don't use the area light a lot because it comes with a lot of uh, complication and there's a very specific use purpose. The area light is uh, baked only in the ULP pipeline. Therefore, let's just do it quickly so you can get a basic understanding of it. The size of the area light defines the intensity even though we have an intensity as well let's just bake general light generate the light quickly so you can see what i mean you can see that it's casting light everywhere but you can see it's not really casting any so soft shadows or hard shadow that's one of the disadvantages uh, of trying to do area baked light it works well for natural lighting or very diffused lighting if i make this super small without doing any other changes i'm going to do generate light and you can see that the intensity actually drops so the size matters so if you have a window and that is its size obviously you want to increase the intensity instead 
to for example 10 and you'll see that it does the job now you can see there is a black area here normally that happens because the range of the bakelite is a bit annoying actually so let's turn it down to range 5 and I'll do a general red lighting and basically you can see this is the 5 so it stops casting the light and everything else is in direct lighting now outside of this and behind here so if I turn off the indirect lighting which we haven't looked at and I do general lighting you can see it's more or less pitch black and this is the range and then if I go to say 12 in range click general lighting you see that is starting to cover the whole area in other words you could have a 3 and you could have 10 in direct lighting instead and you could have 5 in range just a quick example and I can bake the light and what you'll see is you get the room pretty filled up but you'll still see that this is the range of 5 so you want to use it in a very specific context like for cars or very specific shot like it can work in this shot because there's one camera we're not moving the camera so you could use it in this case if you wanted to fill the background make it flat or whatever so hopefully that's useful this is a very quick introduction to the type of lights and different scenarios that is useful to know Now, there was one thing I purposely didn't show. Well, technically, there are two things I didn't show you. But let's focus on one thing. And it consider this an end of the lesson challenge. I will show you it, but I will show it on the next video. As you saw with the area light, what you can see now compared to the previous clip earlier in this video with the area light is that in this example, it's affecting the characters. In the previous example it was not affecting the characters it was only affecting the environment so I want you to figure out why that is the case right so you want to figure that out you might have seen the pop right now in this video you can see it's happening over here okay um, I'll pause the video and I'll show the difference so you actually can try and spot the difference uh, without revealing what you need to do ready gonna break the lighting watch this area you see what happened it didn't occlude it didn't create the shadow it should have right so these are the things you will be learning in uh, my videos is these subtle things so you know that something is off or something isn't working okay so in the first example of the area light it was pretty dark on the characters uh, in this example they looked like they're lit but they aren't actually as well lit as they could be so why is that leave a comment when you figure it out uh, or actually better yet go to discord and message me um, so those people don't know so that would be interesting to see okay so see you on the next video now where i will be discussing uh, other topics such as uh, baked lighting, uh, emissive, and a few other things. And as we progress, there will be more and more content diving deeper into these uh, differences that can be a bit daunting and complicated. So hopefully you'll stop sliding things randomly, but actually know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.